Hello everybody, it's Brian Vining here. I'm going to show you how to build a low polygon Spitfire model using Blender um, through, primarily through the use of just basic uh, polygon modeling. So well, how do we start? First thing I want to show you is that this scene, this is the finished model but it was modeled um, using Blender and using uh, different viewports with a, um, with a blueprints projected in the background. So as you can see, I've got a blueprint here behind the plane on the front view. I've got a blueprint here um, behind the plane in the top view and a blueprint here uh, in this viewport behind the plane in the uh, side view, in the right orthographic view. Uh, now if we have a good look at the model itself, you can see that it's actually um, a quad-based model. It's, it's got fairly good uh, poly flow. Um, and there's really not that many polygons giving us uh, the shape, the shape of the plane. As you can see, the wing sort of curves in really quite nicely with the fuselage and tucks in underneath. Um, it's you know it's a fairly efficient model, and uh, this is sort of the way that I would recommend that people uh, you know create their low polygon models for anything you know for vehicles or characters is try to get the Get the basic shape of the model without putting too many polygons, so that it's um, so that it's an efficient model, particularly when uh, using these sort of models in computer games. All right, so let's uh, get to it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to start a, a whole new project. So it's file new. Now we start when we, the um, Blender first opens. This is what it looks like. We've got um, a single user perspective viewport. We want to click on that um, uh, box and delete it. It's usually already selected. We're all going to also going to click on this camera here by right-clicking on it and hitting delete and getting rid of it because it's it could interfere with what we're trying to do. There's a light here as well. Might as well delete it. You know we're on a roll now. Now we've um, got our, our uh, scene totally empty. We want to add a uh, mesh and we want to add a cylinder is the mesh we want to add. Now the cylinder comes in, the actual model that we're going to create, we want it to have, if you look down here on the um, bottom left, we can uh, adjust the amount of vertices in the cylinder. We want to adjust it so that it has 10 vertices. Um, we'll leave everything else the same. Okay, now that we've done that, we want to uh, basically add some, new, add some more viewports. So I'm just going to come over here up to the top right and drag, uh, select, just when your cursor changes to a little um, plus symbol, we're going to drag it so that we add another viewport, so we have two viewports. Now I'm going to go up to that little uh, area again, and this time we're going to drag down, and we'll end up with a, another viewport. These viewports are going to be set up so that we have a front view here, we're going to have a top view here and the side view here. So let's do that now. Um, now you can adjust the viewport uh, over here by putting your cursor over the viewport and simply just clicking on the number one key in the keypad on your keyboard. Now this now changes it as you can see to front perspective. If we hit five on, on the same keypad, we're talking keypad, not the numbers on the top of your keyboard, the keypad, five, it'll change it to front orthographic view. We come over here to user perspective and we're going to hit 7 and then that'll change it to the top perspective view and 5 to make sure that it's orthographic. Down here in the user perspective view we're going to hit the key number 3 in the keypad and then 5 and uh, now it's a right orthographic view. We've got every view sent up front ortho, top ortho and right orthographic view. Now that we've done that we want to rotate in the front view the actual cylinder so it's facing forward. So the actual planes, uh, the, the nose of the plane will be front uh, facing us. How do we rotate something? We simply click on the R key, R on the keyboard, and then we simply, we want to rotate it on the X axis, so we hit X, and as you can see the little uh, pink line appears, and then we're going to hit 90 to make sure that it rotates 90 degrees to face us. Now, fortunately, we've already put in the amount of uh, uh, vertices we want, so we can just left-click, and uh, we've got our cylinder in there. 
Now this is the base, this is the base for the cylinder that we're going to use for the model uh, that we build. Now I did rotate it then, and that's simply by holding down the middle mouse button and rotating the viewport to look at it. I like to work this way where I rotate the viewport and just continually push polygons and edges around. Alright, so let's bring in some image files so that we can, um, we can now uh, adjust this model. I use the wheel mouse then again just to zoom in on these um, on these separate viewports, just the wheel mouse. All right, so I want to add a um, image file to this viewport and front ortho. I hit N on the keyboard, and it'll bring up my uh, another display here. Now I simply want to go down and I want to add a background image. So I open up a little arrow there, click on background image and hit add image. Now as you can see it's now added another little um, panel down there. What I want to do is to add an image so I click on open and I go searching for it. Now this is going to be fun. Um, I'll just look in, 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 where am I? Here we go, Dropbox. There it is, I found it. Training professionals, 3D modeling. Now I just want a uh, reference image, so it's a Supermarine reference image. I click on that and go open image. Now as you can see here on the left, I've brought in, in the front orthographic view, my reference image. So I'm just going to move the um, image so that it matches up with the uh, geometry. So I just scroll down a little bit. Now you'll notice beneath the area where I added the image, there's these other um, uh, I suppose transform gizmos that allow you to move the image. So I'm just going to click on X, oh, wrong one, and click on Y, and just move it up so that my plane is lining up. My aeroplane is lining up with uh, the basic front blueprint on that uh, reference image. If I hit Z on the keyboard, it'll become transparent. Uh, the actual geometry will become transparent. Z allows me to toggle between uh, shaded and uh, wireframe. What I want to do now is scale the whole cylinder a little bit so it's closer in size to my actual um, blueprint behind it. So I just hit S on the keyboard and just scale it down a little bit so that this is kind of matching the front of the airplane. Z. I just want to tweak it a little bit until I get um, this perfect I suppose. The, the, more, the, the more time you spend, I've actually moved the geometry then, but the more time you spend getting your geometry and your blueprint lined up at the beginning is the more time you will, is, uh, more time you will save. Less, I don't know what that means. Let, you'll save more time in the long run, okay? Alright, now we're going to come over here to the right orthographic view. I'm going to hit N on the keyboard and I'm going to add my, I'm going to uh, put in a uh, background image for the side view. So I click on background image, add image, open. It's going to make me search for it again. Okay, open image. Now I've got the side view. Now I'll just go ahead and adjust these and try not to talk too much while I do it. Here we go. So I'm just adjusting the side view, so I've got my aeroplane lined up with the side view. Again, you can zoom in at any point with the wheel mouse. You can hold down shift and pan. It's really important to get these lined up, um, to, to get, be, and it's, it's a very big aid when you're actually mod doing your model, completing your model, because um, basically it takes the thinking out of it. You can just follow the blueprint. Okay, we've got the side view, we've got the front view right, with side view, now we've got to get the top view. Now I did find with this top view, a problem arose, and that was the fact that my original uh, blueprint images um, basically weren't rotated in a way that best optimised, hit the wrong button there, um, best optimised what I was trying to do. So, I had to create another one, and I'll show you what I mean. Add image, open. Search again. Now I've made a supermarine, supermarine top view for the plane. 
And as you can see, this particular bitmap is just the top view. Um, now, I just basically cut it out of the original background, what's here, that's, that's here, I cut it out and then rotated it using paint and then and saved it as another JPEG. All right, so I've got my image there. Now this one is slightly off. What do I do to make that geometry transparent? Hit Z on the keyboard and then I'm just going to move the, um, the background image to match. So I just go like so. I can really put it right in the center if I want, which is not a bad idea. Okay, now we're talking. Now, we've got it all set up. Now that we've done that, the, the thing that we want to really do is try and minimize the amount of work we need to do to get the basic geometry, get the, the model and the basic shape created. And now there's a few little tips I'd like to show you. In if we pick, if we just say we're going to just select at this point in time the right orthographic view and work on that, I'm just going to hit uh, Control and the Up key. You know, there's the keys uh, just to the right of the Return key, so we can go up, down, left, or right. Control and Up, and it toggles my viewport to full screen. And this is very handy, I feel. Middle mouse, there. Yeah, middle mouse button allow me to uh, zoom in a little bit and again shift to pan okay what can I do here first thing I want to do is go into um, edit mode and I can do that by hitting control and tab and it doesn't work the same on the Mac as what it does on a PC let me just check that no it's all going pear shaped control tab no it doesn't work the same so I'm going to go back to doing it just manually if I go into edit mode, um, I can now basically just uh, select the verts and start moving them around. So I'm just going to uh, use the B key to select this row of verts at the back of the uh, cylinder. Now I'm going to move all these verts right to the end of the plane. So I can do that by moving the green arrow there and I'm moving all those verts to the back of the airplane. I'll use the red, uh, sorry, the blue arrow to shift them up. Now, I'm just going to scale them. How do I do that? I hit S on the keyboard and just scale them down. Oh, scale them down. Okay, now I, I can use my middle mouse, middle mouse button just to rotate. You see I've already created um, a cylinder there that's extruded and it's the beginning of the fuselage. Now, in this viewport, if I want to go back to what I had, I just hit 3 on the keypad and it snaps back. Z will go transparent again. Okay, let's take this geometry and move it as far forward as um, as I dare, I suppose. So I'm just going to take these verts and move them right to the very um, front of the plane, probably around about here. And then scale again, and just scale it down. Now, later on, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to add a lot more rows of uh, edges in order to model in the wings and to model in the uh, cockpit and the tail, but I'll get back to that in a sec. Now say I've done this, I've, I've, I've extruded my, or I've adjusted my uh, cylinder a little bit. I'm just going to rotate it around and I'm going to go back down here to face mode, right click, and I want to extrude this out. What do I hit? E on the keyboard. Let's go back to um, the right view again. I just hit E, and now I can simply drag that uh, that whole face out. I'll switch back to um, transparent mode at the same time by hitting Z. Uh, it won't allow me, so I won't do that. Okay, so I'm just going to click. Now I'm going to hit Z on the keyboard to make it transparent. Scale, scale it in a little bit. I can hit E again to move it out. Now you notice what I'm trying to do is uh, create the geometry of the plane with as few um, polygons as possible. Now this one you'll notice is slightly, uh, it sort of tilts up as the plane moves this direction. I'm just going to move it up a bit, just slightly. Hit E again, 
and then S for scale, and then I'll move it up again. Um, now I can use either the blue arrow or the green arrow, or there's, there's another tool you can use which is actually G for grab, which will move it in any direction. So if you have anything selected, be it faces or verts or edges, G will actually move it in any direction. Okay, we've got the, the tip of the nose there. We're just going to make the actual um, propeller blade thing. E, nose cone. That sounds better than propeller blade thing. And then S, scale down. E, S. E is extrude, S is scale. And one last one, E, and then S. Now we just modeled the, um, I like to rotate around after I've done these things, just modeled the front of the Spitfire. It's looking quite good. Now, creating the back of the plane, at any point, say we've got this model created, we say we wanted to put more edges in here more edges down the center of the body and we thought, oh, we should have put them in before. What do we do? Are we damned? Are we stuffed? No, we, we just hit Control R. And Control R will allow us to add more edges. So Control R will do exactly that. If I hit Escape. Now, if I, I want to go back to, and I'll leave it in this sort of wipe, in this shaded mode. Control R. And if I use the wheel mouse, I can uh, turn the wheel mouse and add as many edges as I like. And then when you're happy with that, you just simply hit left click on the mouse. I'm not going to add too many. I'm just going to add um, maybe, I'll add that many, three. And then I'll hit left click. Now, oh, left click. It, it uh, allows you to now move them once you've created them. And then left click again, and then they're in there permanently. Now, I won't go too far with moving these edges around, but ultimately, I want to be able to have these edges so that they're further down this area. I'll just zoom in a bit more. Further down this area so I can extrude this wing from a couple of faces that are going to be on this side of the, of the aircraft. So um, if I now go into the face mode, what I'm saying is basically these edges here are going to be used to extrude the wing out from. So it'll be like E to extrude the wing. We'll go straight down like that. It'll be E and then, I'll just show you, this is a very rough approximation of what's happening. The wings will extrude out like that. Okay, now what I will do is just stop there and uh, continue. Well, I might continue on just doing the tail at this point. Now, the way I did this, um, okay, Z, B, I just want to select those. This time I'm just selecting, A will deselect everything, B will just select the verts, um, S on the keyboard will allow it to scale, and there we've got the back of the fuselage. I like to rotate around every now and then just to have a look at it, like an F3 to snap back. Um, it's looking good. Now let's just extend this right to the end. Uh, again, I like to rotate it. The face is already selected, so it is fine. Down here if I select face. Oh, no, that's okay. And then I'm just going to hit extrude and extend the actual uh, tail of the plane out. Could scale it. Move it up. Sometimes it's good with this sort of thing to go as far as you think, as far as you can get away with. If I go this far, I'm not going to get away with it. If I go this far, it's going to work. So I hit left click. Then I'll just scale it a little bit so the top of my um, uh, fuselage is in line with the rest of it. It's a straight line along here. And then E again. Now this is where it starts to get tricky because we really do have to figure out how we're going to end the back of the plane here, how we're going to finish the plane. Um, if I go into vertex mode, I can move these verts around, but it might give me a very ugly rear of the plane. Um, but we'll worry about that 
later. We're just going to try and get it made, get the plane built, and then once the plane is built, we will um, start pushing polygons around to make it uh, and make it more finished. Oops, B to select, G to move, B. Select that there. Now the basic principle of what I'm going to try to do once I get the back of the plane sorted is to then um, extrude the actual uh, tail wing up from the back. Oh, Control Z from the back of the plane. So I'll just show you quickly. If I was to just extrude that straight up, extrude, it would end up looking very ugly, like a big blob on the back of the plane. But if I was to be tricky about it and extrude it, just a tiny fraction, tiny fraction, and then hit, then come down here to the, um, this is the actual scale manipulator, and just scale it on one axis so it goes in, so it sort of cuts into it, and then scale on the other axis, this, this uh, green axis, pull it in as well. What we've done is we've allowed ourselves uh, to build a, um, uh, like an indent, extrude, now it comes up. Now it's still not quite right, it's not quite right at all, but uh, what I'll do is I'll refer back to my actual uh, finish model and show you what I did there. Okay, so this has been a really quick sort of um, uh, tutorial that's looked at. I just can't, I, I can't force myself to stop here and just, and uh, and uh, give up on this, but I will. I will show you the finished model and show you what I made using the same technique because it does take a bit of time to push and pull verts around. All right, so let's have a look at that.